نحمده ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم uh, We start by praising Allah uh, All praise belongs to Allah We praise Him We seek help from Him And we seek forgiveness from Him we seek refuge with him from the evil of our souls and the sins of our bad deeds. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide, and whomever Allah misguides, no one can guide. I testify that there is no true God except Allah, and that Muhammad ﷺ is his messenger and slave. Uh, the best speech is the book of Allah and the speech of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And uh, every newly invented matter is an innovation. And every innovation leads astray. And everything that leads astray from the straight path ends in the hellfire. And today we continue uh, our sessions. Uh, today I have the privilege of talking about uh, our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and one of the aspects that uh, is essential in our understanding and following our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and that is how to correctly love him sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam loving Allah and loving the Prophet alayhi salam is one of the conditions of la ilaha illallah and it's one of the conditions of being saved on the day of judgment. A person who says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, with love and only to please Allah. So one of those conditions the ulama said is mahabba. And that means to love Allah with the hub, with the love of ta'zim and ibadah uh, in a correct way. And to love the Prophet ﷺ in a correct way uh, for that reason uh, it is not uh, possible for a person to truly practice Islam or even understand Islam until we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly and we love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa correctly the reason I say correctly is because everyone claims to love Allah and to love the Prophet sallallahu but uh, there is not, I think, a Muslim or anyone who calls himself a Muslim, except if you were to ask them, do you love Allah and his messenger, salam, they would have replied, yes. And we see that Muslims these days, they, and even before it started a long time ago, those all Muslims who say we all love Allah and the Prophet, salam, they have different ways. Some of them, they even have different beliefs, as we discussed last week, when we talked about where is Allah. And as you saw, some of the exchanges that happened at the end uh, were very strange. And it showed that Muslims, in order for us to unite, we need to uh, unite upon the kalima. Otherwise, we can't unite. If we unite upon salah and fasting and everything else, but we differ regarding Allah and the Prophet ﷺ, that is not real unity. For that reason, it's very important for us to understand how to correctly love Allah and worship Him and how to correctly love the Prophet ﷺ and follow Him. And from uh, all of us probably know that from the Kamal, uh, the perfection of our Iman is to love the Prophet ﷺ more than ourselves, more than our parents, more than our children, and more than all the people. And the Prophet ﷺ said, 
لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين. This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet said, none of you truly believes. If you literally translate, it means none of you believes. But it doesn't mean because Iman, this is a very important issue. Many people now, they talk about issues of Iman and Kufr. Not everyone can talk about those issues. Unfortunately, everyone does or most people do. Iman, just like Kufr, we have the beginning of Iman that makes someone a Muslim and the top of Iman, which is the Iman that is top of those people who perfect their Iman. And from the perfection of Iman is to love the Prophet more than yourself, more than your parents, and more than your children. And there are different degrees between the minimum when a person becomes a Muslim or he or she is born a Muslim and they understand what it is like to love the Prophet ﷺ until they reach that level, if they ever reach it. It doesn't mean that they are not Muslims, but their Iman is deficient. And they may have some deficiency which is haram, some deficiency which is makruh. These are very delicate issues which many people don't understand. And they talk about these issues of Iman because these ulama call them ahmalul qulub. Loving, hating, uh, hoping from Allah, relying on Allah. All of these are the actions of the heart. So they are the most important actions. They come before the actions of the body. That is why the belief of Ahlul Sunnah, the real Ahlul Sunnah, those who follow the Sunnah, because Ahlul Sunnah means those who follow the Sunnah. Jama'ah means those who unite upon the Sunnah. The belief of Ahlul Sunnah regarding Iman is that it's qawlun wa amal. It's actions and statements. Yazidu wa yanqus. It increases and it decreases. And the ulama, they say, that qawlun means qawlul qalbi wa qawlul lisan, the saying of the tongue and the saying of the heart, and that is the belief of the heart. And amal means amalul jawarih wa amalul qalb. Amal means the actions of the body and the actions of the heart. The actions of the heart are love, hate for the sake of Allah. These are some of the greatest ibadat. That's why the Prophet ﷺ the, the asl of that hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari and I think I mentioned it before in our lectures uh, the, the Sahabi, the, one of the Sahaba who used to drink khamr and he used, they used to bring him for punishment to the Prophet and some of the Sahaba said Allah or la'natullahi alayk ma aksara ma yu'tabik you know, he said, may Allah curse you because how many times are they are going to bring you for this? The Prophet Sallam said to him, don't say that. And this person has committed a sin. And most people would join that person in cursing that individual. But the Prophet Sallam Sunnah, that's why we always say, in order to know the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, we must study his Sunnah. It's not what we think he was or he said or something it is what he really said and did alayhi salam he said alayhi salam don't say that don't you know he said la ilaha illallah or that he loves allah and the messenger alayhi salam how can the prophet salam know that someone loves allah and the messenger alayhi salam that normally is apparent from certain actions because we can't know what is in the hearts of people and the prophet salam despite what some people claim, he doesn't know what's in the hearts of people. He doesn't know the ghaib, except we discussed that issue before, the unseen, except what Allah allows him to know. For that reason, uh, the, the ulama of Islam, including Shaykh al-Islam, the rahmahullah, they said the reason the Prophet ﷺ defended this individual was because he, even though he committed a sin, 
he also did one of the greatest ibadat. One of the greatest acts of worship is to love Allah and the Messenger. For that reason, it's very important for us to know that the person's iman increases and decreases depending upon how much he loves Allah and how much he loves the Prophet and everything else that follows that love. Meaning the actions that prove that we love Allah and the actions that prove that we love the Prophet That's why the ulama say a person who abuses Allah and abuses the Prophet is a kafir. Why? Because that saying proves he doesn't respect or love Allah at all. Zero in his heart. And that abuse to the Prophet shows that he doesn't love or respect the Prophet at all. Or some they abuse the deen and some brothers from Arab countries they know that in some Arab countries and maybe even non-Arab countries in Muslim countries we have that problem that when someone gets angry they abuse the deen they abuse Islam and that's kufr so therefore we must understand that these issues are very important and we must purify first of all our hearts before anything else for that reason, this topic of loving the Prophet ﷺ is very important. It comes after loving Allah. And loving Allah is one of the pillars of worshipping Allah. The other pillar, there are two pillars of worshipping Allah correctly. Loving Allah correctly. And the other one is fearing Allah correctly. And making oneself humble. That's why Allah hates a person who is not humble. Even to people. Because that shows some kind of something that is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because one of his uh, attributes and one of his names, Al-Mutakabbir. And the same applies to the Prophet sallallahu We must understand how to love him correctly, alayhi salatu wa salam, and what that means, what are the consequences of, in terms of our statements, beliefs and actions so of course as you know we don't have a lot of time we have roughly 50 minutes or so so i will mention certain pointers after which inshallah anyone who wishes <coughs> can do more research and can increase their love for the prophet ﷺ in the correct way the reason i say in the correct way is because like i said many people claim to love the prophet ﷺ, but they contradict his sunnah and they don't follow his sunnah they don't respect people of the sunnah they abuse them they lie against them they abuse the ulama of the sunnah so that goes against loving the prophet sallam, as i will explain so we must love the prophet sallam, for a few reasons first of all in relation to who sent him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we know, sent him. Because Allah said, Inna arsalnaka. We have indeed sent you. Shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. He mentioned a few jobs of the Prophet as a witness over those people. And as giver of good news, glad tidings, and as a warner. Wa da'yan in Allah bi idnihi. And the person who calls to Allah, if the Prophet ﷺ was calling to Allah, every person who calls to, to, to Islam must call to Allah, not to himself or his sheikh or his group or anyone. He has to have ikhlas. Wasirajam munira. And as a blazing lamp that shows the way. This of course shows that the guidance is what is intended. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to show us the way, as Allah said, so that there is no hujja, there is no proof for the people against Allah after sending the messengers and prophets. For that reason, we must love the Prophet ﷺ if we love Allah. The second point why we must love the Prophet ﷺ is in relation to his personality. 
Because they say normally if you want to love someone or respect someone, they say, subhanAllah, that person is so, so, such and such, and he has great this, great that. If you analyze the personality of the Prophet ﷺ, the only thing you do is become amazed. Even non-Muslims who are objective and they do not lean against Islam, they recognize that the personality of the Prophet ﷺ was amazing. And of course, to analyze the personality of the Prophet ﷺ, we must understand the context and the time in which he lived, uh, For example, when we analyze how he used to respect contracts and agreements, most of them not written. Nowadays they say, anything written? No. Well, who cares? Uh, what we agree uh, verbally is the same as written, doesn't matter. It's the same as witness or no witness. That's how the Prophet ﷺ used to do. Even uh, one of the Sahaba, and maybe I mentioned it before, but it's worth repeating. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu anhu. Him and his father, radiyallahu anhu. They were uh, going from Mecca to Medina. And they were stopped by some non-Muslims who were fighting the Prophet ﷺ on the way. And they said, where are you going? They said, to Medina. They said, you want to fight with this man, meaning Muhammad They said, we just go in there. So they said, we take from you agreement that when you reach Medina, you do not fight against us with the Prophet Otherwise, you can't go. They said, we give you that agreement. Then they came to the Prophet and they said this. And at that time, of course, the Prophet needed every single man who could fight. He said, you must fulfill your obligation and you must uh, honor your agreement with those people. And we will go without you to fight and nasta'inu allaha alayhim. We ask Allah to help us. That's just one example. Of course, the Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, I mentioned, I think, in the khutbahs and in the talks, the agreement of Hudaybiyah, and I advise all brothers and sisters to go to Sahih al-Bukhari in the book of Shurut conditions and to find it Shurut in the war or something and to read that hadith. That is very important hadith. It was uh, agreed in the year 6th after Hijrah. And the story is very amazing. All of these things, they show just one aspect, the honoring of the Prophet ﷺ agreements, however difficult they are, unless, as Allah said to him in the Quran, the other party doesn't honor them. Then he has a choice and sometimes an obligation as the Muslims have to not honor that agreement as the Prophet did with some people who helped others against him to fight him. For that reason, that is just one aspect. And of course, we all know in Allah SWT said, You are upon a great uh, degree of character and manners. And Allah said, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ That if you were very harsh with, with a heart that is hard, not soft, they would have run away or dispersed from around you. And also Allah described him, alayhi at the end of Surah At-Tawbah بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ he is kind and merciful towards the believers. This ayah shows that a person can be called Rahim, but not Rahman. Because Rahman, the meaning is only for Allah. So also the Prophet ﷺ said, Innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al akhlaq That I have been sent to complete good manners. Not to bring, but to complete them, because others brought those manners before. But the Prophet ﷺ is completing. And look, Ikhwan, sometimes we think we are having a difficult life and we're going through difficulty. Just read some of the difficulties the Prophet ﷺ had. And your life will seem like luxury, like you living like a king. And I said it before, I think that 
Aisha radiallahu anha said, a, a moon would come and another and another, two months or three at least, and we would only have water and dates. And she said, we would not light a fire throughout that period in our houses. Nowadays we light fire just for tea five times. Alhamdulillah. So this we must understand. The Prophet ﷺ, he had difficult life. That's after moving to Medina, not to mention Makkah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, to be, subhanAllah, humble, alayhi salatu salam, he said, I will tell you about a prophet. And I think in one narration says himself. And the ulama said it's himself. Some said it's Nuh. But the correct thing is himself, alayhi salatu Wiping the blood after he was injured and saying, Allah, forgive my people because they don't know. They don't know. And like I said before, some abuse that you get sometimes from some non-Muslims, who most of them, they don't know. Imagine yourself, you come home, you watch news, all you do is sometimes you drink, sometimes maybe you don't drink. I mean alcohol. Sometimes the person goes football, sometimes he goes with his friends. None of them, they think about why we live, why we are here, why, what should... Their life is like sleep, eat, drink, go work, come back, go football, shout, abuse the, ref abuse the referee or the other team, go home, mashallah. Then don't be surprised that someone, they see a woman covered, they're shocked, even though they've seen it many times. They see a man with a beard that's long. They find it strange because for them it's a different way of life. For that reason, we must understand and we must remind one another that any difficulty we have is nothing compared to what the Prophet ﷺ did. And all of that I'm saying to show his great patience. To show his great patience. And he used to also, والسلام, to be extremely humble. And he used to say, والسلام, don't prefer me over Musa. Don't prefer me over Yunus bin Matta. These are all prophets. And he used to say in Bukhari and Muslim, Musa alayhi salam, faqad uthiya Musa akthara min hadha, fasabar. Musa alayhi salam used to be harmed more than me, and he was patient. And the ulama said, it's not true. Meaning that the Prophet is saying that to show that he is humble. Maybe some of it, of course, is true. We're not saying the Prophet didn't speak the truth, but we are saying, the ulama said this is to humble himself alayhi That's why the Prophet said, Man lillahi rafa'ahu Allah. Who humbles himself for Allah, not for dunya, Allah will raise him. For Allah, because some people uh, who don't understand, they think when you humble yourself, you're weak or you're something. or you For Allah, but when it's necessary, you also brave for the sake of Allah. Ikhwan, please move a bit forward. So that uh, these qualities, they must, whenever we know more about the Prophet they must show us how great he was, his personality. And the hadith that many people say when Ramadan comes, that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah described the Prophet that he used to be the most generous. كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان حين يلقاه جبريل. That he used to be the most generous in Ramadan when Jibril used to meet him and revise Quran with him عليه الصلاة But the first sentence gets gets omitted. The Prophet was the most generous of people before Ramadan and after Ramadan. But in Ramadan he used to increase it. And he used to say, I don't wish to have any yellow or white, meaning gold or silver, in my house, except I like to distribute it among you. And once he said, that they did iqama, salah. They said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, they're ready to pray now. The Prophet said, stay, stay where you are. 
and he went and came back and the Sahaba then asked, he said, there was some gold which I feared if I don't distribute, it will be something. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, you ask me and I give you, you ask me and I give you, you ask me and I give you until I have nothing. You will never find me bakhil. You will never find me. This is one of the great characteristics of a Muslim. Like I said today in the khutbah. It's one of the great characteristics. It's very bad to see a man who is ruled by his money. He's slave to it. That's very bad. And maybe some of you know such people. I know many, unfortunately. But we also, alhamdulillah, we shouldn't say like some people, oh, Muslims all bad. No, we have a lot of good people who spend a lot, mashallah, jazahumullah khair, who spend a lot. And they, they follow if they have the correct niyyah, the correct intention, and they spend because it's the sunnah, they will get great reward. Which you can't imagine. The Prophet ﷺ said, this small, less than a meter, the whip, I mean, the biggest whip is a meter maybe. Whip, yeah? Which is sawt, with sin. That, لَمَوْدُعُ سَوْتِ أَحَدِكُمْ فِي الْجَنَّةِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا It's better than the whole dunya, and that space in Jannah, in paradise, is better than the whole dunya and whatever is in it. So imagine you get just that. And of course the person who is the smallest in Ajr, in the Jannah, the one who will, is long hadith, but at the end Allah will give him like this dunya and ten times more. That's the smallest the one. And he will keep saying, oh Allah, turn me, my, because he will be facing the nar. Because he will be taken from the nar. This contradicts the aqidah of the khawarij and mu'tazila who say that there is no one taken from Nar, from the Muslims, from the hellfire. Ahlul Sunnah, we believe that, as the Prophet ﷺ told us. So, his face is fa and it's hot. And he will say, oh Allah, turn me away from the Nar. Allah will turn him. And he will say, will you ask anything? No, no, I, by your honor, I will not ask. He will turn him, then he will far he will see and feel Jannah. He will say, Allah, make me closer to Jannah. And he said, I told you, you said you do, wouldn't ask anything. He will say, please make me closer. He, will you ask anything? No, no, I will not ask. Then he closes. So then when he sees Jannah, say, oh, make me enter Jannah. <laughs> because it's too good. <laughs> So then we have in this hadith, the sifa, the attribute of dahik. Allah will laugh and enter him Jannah and he will say to him, wish what you want. Imagine يعني, someone says to us, Akhi, wish what you like, I will give you. Say, okay, let me wish as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and that person will wish what he can. Of course, Jannah opportunity. That's, I'm telling you, the smallest in Ajr. Smallest in Ajr. And he will wish and wish and Allah will give and he will say, I will also give you more, just what you didn't wish. And he will say, I give you dunya and ten times more. Ten times more. And now people are killing each other for some part of the dunya. Small part, it's not even all the dunya. If you analyze one billion pounds or dollars, it's nothing in the dunya, really. So people are killing each other. So we have to try and realize that just by following the Prophet, a little bit Allah gives great reward. That's why a true believer he doesn't care about the problems in the dunya because he's patient, Allah is trying him. It's just a trial. He knows that in al Usri Yusran. That after every ease there is after every hardship there is ease. For that reason, the Prophet ﷺ was patient. And you remember the story of a Ta'if, very famous, when he Allah sent the angel Malikul Jibal, 
who said to him, I've been sent by Allah because those people abused you, disrespected you, and he saw what they did to you. So tell me what I do. I will do anything you want. And imagine if someone is angry and they just, they didn't uh, throw things at the Prophet themselves. They, sent, they said Sufaha, those people who are stupid and children or someone to humiliate the Prophet Sallallahu and someone who is like that, you have some feelings, of course. And there, therefore, the person has natural feeling of retaliation. The Prophet ﷺ said, No, I hope Allah will bring from those people someone who will worship him alone. And now Ta'if, mashallah, yani Ta'if. We know that Ta'if is Ta'if. Ibn Abbas who died there. Now his grave is in Taif. And Taif now, mashallah, Muslim, and they worship Allah, alhamdulillah. So knowing the personality of the Prophet ﷺ is very important. Because many Muslims, they don't know his personality. Therefore, if we don't know his personality, our love is weak for him, alayhi Our love is weak. And if we don't know his personality, alayhi that will replace something, that will be replaced by something else. And of course, we can talk about it a long time, but we have limited time. So his personality, his appearance, as Anas described him, Ali radiallahu anhu described him. You know, the Sahaba were ready, Ikhwan, to die for him. And they considered it great achievement. Why? Because of all of that. Because of all of that. And how he used to be with them. Every hadith almost you see, Kunna inda Rasulullah sallallahu we were with the Prophet ﷺ, with the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. The hadith of Umar when Jibril came, kunna julusan inda Rasulullah ﷺ. We were sitting with the Prophet ﷺ. So how much he sacrificed for his ummah and how much he used to give time. And his wives used to live in a room. Now, mashallah, if we live in a room, we consider we are homeless. You know, we, I, I live in homeless accommodation. What do you have? One room. It's true. And the Prophet ﷺ, Aisha and every other wife used to have a curtain. And people used to come. That's why Allah told them in Surah Al-Ahzab, don't just stay there talking and things. He has just a room. Yani you inconveniencing the Prophet ﷺ. And he's shy to tell you. And Allah la min al haqq Allah is not shy to tell you often to tell you the truth. And yet, with this, he used to bring people to eat. And now we have uh, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom. Sometimes we don't know what to do with the fourth bedroom or third bedroom. And we very rarely have some people don't know even our house. That's shame. That's not the way of the Prophet. And yet, he died, and his dirh, his fighting armor, was murtahan. I mean, as, as a security, as guarantee, was given to a Jewish man for some food. And of course, there are many hikam why Allah made it like that. One of them is that people, enemies of Islam, don't accuse him, sallam, that he did it for money. Like now, when we talk about the ulama, they say, oh, scholars for dollars. That's very nasty saying, to be honest. And they say many other uh, bad things. Yes, we have scholars for dollars. We don't deny. We, there are people who just do fatwa and others for money and for dunya and for position. It's true. But the, the ulama who sunnah from loving the Prophet ﷺ, as we will come now in a few minutes, is to love the ulama of sunnah. So also we must love the Prophet ﷺ in relation to his message and his da'wah. Because his message وسلم, and his da'wah, his call, is not to himself, even though he could have called to himself. None of the Prophet, all Prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam, da'wah is to themselves. They all say, U'budu Allah, la tushriku bihi shay'an, aw ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. That worship Allah, you have no God or no one to worship except Him. The, the same, the Prophet, as we said, Ud'u ila rabbik, there are many ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, call to your Lord. 
ud'u ila sabili rabbi call to the path of your lord and everything else and his call despite what enemies of the prophet sallam and enemies of islam claim his call is not terrorism <coughs> where is terrorism when he forbids to kill the women and children uh, women who don't take part in fighting or otherwise woman soldier is a soldier but women who don't take part in fighting the monks who worship others than Allah, they do shirk full time. Or not? They do shirk. Who do they worship? They say Isa is son of Allah. Isa, Isa ibn Allah. The Prophet said, don't touch them. Where is his call uh, terrorism? Even the people who... Uh, the people who come to the Prophet and say, like Ma'iz, one of the Sahaba, he committed zina. Now people, they say, look, Yahi Saudi, there is zina. Subhanallah. Yahi, there is Sahaba who committed zina, Ikhwan. Doesn't mean we accept zina. No, but in those times even happened. Were you supposed to stand with a gun about every house, don't do zina? It can happen. Does it mean that now we have to make war in the whole country? Who says that with his right mind? Except Khawarij and Shia and those who are fitna people. So this great man came and said to the Prophet, I committed zina. Punish me because I don't want to be punished by Allah in the hereafter. This is easier than that. So the Prophet turned away. He said, maybe you did something else. He said, no, he came the other way in front of the Prophet. That happened three or four times. So that shows that Islam is not what some people claim. You hack the hand of a, of a thief with a hacksaw. You know, like daily mail. Daily lies. They lie all the, to all the time about Allah. And about the, the, the messenger of Allah. And about the deen of Allah. And they don't feel shy. Because the person never called to terrorism. Where? He said, who kills a person, non-Muslim, who has a permission to be with Muslims, or enter or agreement, this is hadith is in Bukhari, he will not find the fragrance of Jannah. Not enter Jannah, fragrance, smell. And you can find the fragrance of Jannah from 70 years distance, or 100 years distance. Where is the terrorism? And some people say we teach terrorism. I teach terrorism. Which terrorism did we teach? Don't lie. Fear Allah if you're a Muslim. And fear the court if you're not a Muslim. Don't lie. Don't lie. Lying is a, a characteristic that is blameworthy in every religion. Do not lie against us. Because we hear what we teach. And what this masjid is about. It's not about terrorism. It's not about... This is about improving society. What is better, a person who is a sober or a person falling out of the pub because he can't walk anymore? What is better? Who is a person who is better? The person who worships Allah and makes himself and his heart obey Allah or obey his desires, which means shaitan. Whatever shaitan says, he says, I do it. You know those people, some of the serial killers, when they interview them, they say, someone told me to kill. They say, oh, this guy is, you know. He's not. Someone tells him to kill. And even how to do it. Analyze the Hollywood films. How many of them, you know, when I drive past billboards, gun like that, gun like that. Yeah, subhanAllah, you're calling us terrorists. Who releases how many films a year Teaching how to kill. Who? Us? No. If, if one Muslim company released, that's it. They would be closed. And in every almost film, there are some Arabs with guns running around, shouting, Allahu Akbar. What's this? And people believe it because they, they don't think. So if they see you with a thaw, someone actually said to us, and some brothers with us. Where did you leave your camel? 
Because that's how they think. So some people accuse the Prophet ﷺ of being a terrorist. And that of course is not true. But the way to prove it is not to jump on high buildings. Like some people do. Or to destroy property. What's the property got to do with it? The, reason, the way to do it is to first of all lodge a complaint. Why a newspaper or someone prints it? What freedom of speech is that? Freedom of abuse you mean? Yes. What freedom of speech? Can I write F words in the Daily Telegraph? It's freedom of speech. F, F is the article. Swear words. Can I write swear words? No. So where is the freedom of speech? That means there are limits. So if there are limits, don't abuse prophet of Islam. Before you know who he is, because what you write are lies. Lies. And when we invite the BBC and everyone else, they don't turn up. Why? Because it's not interesting. Islam calls to goodness. Who's going to? Or someone today, I think Brother Shafiq told me, Imam has been removed due to death threats. That, that sells. Death threats. You know, the person who has no brain left, because he reads Daily Mail and Express, and he watches TV. So, oh, Imam, whoa. Oh, death threats. Look, mate, death threats. This Imam, you know those crazy Muslims. Who believes that anyway? I don't know. Is anyone left who believes it? There must be someone who watches Fox News or something like that. Even many Americans call it fact-free zone. Maybe Foxes watch it. I don't know. It's Fox News. And that, the, even the name is strange. I mean, why is Fox News? Have you ever thought? You know, I have this thing about names. So the point I'm making is the personality of the Prophet ﷺ is very important to know and his da'wah and his message very important to know. For that reason, we love the Prophet ﷺ and we hate anyone who talks bad about them and we explain the truth. We must. If we can't, then we ask those who can. We don't take the law into our hands and do bad things. Also, we must love the Prophet ﷺ in relation to what he has brought to mankind. Not just to Muslims, to mankind. Many uh, things, uh, principles they use, but many people don't know that Islam brought it and the Prophet ﷺ brought it. And people, of course, nowadays they know that those laws, and of course when I think the Archbishop of Canterbury, he said good things about Islam, they nearly assassinated him. Why doesn't anyone say about that freedom of speech? That's his opinion. He said something good about Islam. Oh, that's a crime. We didn't know that. That's a new crime. To praise Islam is a new crime. And some people went as far as to say, he must resign. Why should he resign? You say it's freedom of speech. So his opinion is many things that Islam stands for would benefit British society. Why not? Who said that someone is forcing uh, people to become Muslims? No one said that. He never said that. But of course many people, their job is to twist things. They get paid for it. And Allah said about the Prophet Mustaqim. You indeed guide to the straight path. And from the Sunnah and from following the Sunnah is to reward someone and repay the goodness if someone does good to you. How can we repay the good the Prophet has done to us? We can't repay that. The least we can do is to love him and follow his Sunnah. And it is not possible for us to love the Prophet ﷺ except by knowing his personality, his appearance, his seerah, his biography, his manners, and his deen. It is not possible for us to love someone. If someone says, you know that brother, do you know him? Yeah, I've heard of him, but I don't know much about him. It's not possible to love or hate that person because you don't know much about them. 
So the more we know about the Prophet ﷺ, including his deen, those three things are things we're going to be asked in the grave. Who is your Lord? Who is your Prophet? And what's your deen? So if we don't know Allah well, if we don't know the Prophet ﷺ well, if we don't know their religion well, what are we going to say? So that's very important. So does it mean that we all become scholars? It's not possible. But we ask. And we attend classes uh, that are beneficial. And of course, from tamam, from the complete min tamam al mahabba, to correctly love the Prophet ﷺ, ta'atuhu wa mutaba'atuhu, alayhi salam is to follow him and to obey him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged those, the ulama call it ayatul imtihan, the ayah of the test. In Surah uh, Al-Imran, number 31. And that is, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرٌ رَحِيمٌ that say, if you love Allah, then follow me. So people say, we love Allah, we love God. They say, God loves you. How do you know? Maybe God hates me. How do you know? No, we don't know. Well, God sent you a message. He loves me. We don't know unless we do what he likes. And he told us that. That's why some ulama call the Quran the last testament. There is nothing after that. So don't you think that if you are not a Muslim, if you read the Old Testament, the New Testament, you should read the last one? At least to see what is inside. And if you are a Muslim, then if you say you love Allah, you must follow the Prophet ﷺ. That's what Allah said. Say if you love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you. Then Allah will love you. And forgive you your sins. And Allah is forgiving, merciful. What else do we want, Ikhwan? Allah's love plus forgiveness of sins. What else? And Allah will say, as the Prophet said, to the people of Jannah, and that man even who enters, he will say, do you want anything else? They will say, you have given us more than we need and more than we ask. Allah will say, I will give you something that's more than that. They will say, what can be more? He will say, I'm pleased with you and never be angry with you. And of course, one of the, the greatest reward, even more than Jannah, is to look at the face of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from them. And many people of Bid'ah, they say, oh, how can you say that? We say that because the Prophet Sallallahu said. So... That is how you reach the love of Allah if you follow the Prophet ﷺ. And Allah said, مَن يُطِعِ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ Whoever obeys the messenger, he has obeyed Allah. And he sent every messenger with proofs. So if someone says, how do we know the Prophet ﷺ was really a messenger? We have many proofs. One of the, the greatest, if not the greatest proof is the Qur'an. Not only the fact that they couldn't bring one surah, the Arabs who used to be so proficient in Arabic, and some of them used to bring and say, this is from Allah. And his, one of his, I think it was Musaylim al-Kathab, the liar from Yemen, Musaylima, he used to say, oh, Allah revealed, you know. So one of his friends said, you know that I know that you're a liar. <laughs> and they say that one of the rulers they brought some guy who they mention in history books they brought some man who used to claim to be a prophet so that khalifa said to him so he said what is your sign Allah sends all prophets with signs what is your sign he said I know what you're thinking oh he said what am I thinking he said, you're thinking I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, even though he was a liar, he was clever liar. He said, you're thinking, anta ta anni kathab. He said, that's true. <laughs> 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 so 
So he said, lock him up in jail. Then after two, three days, they called him to the Khalifa, and Khalifa said to him, have you got any wahi? Meaning he's joking with him. Have you got any revelation from Allah? He said, no. He said, why? He said, the angels don't enter the prison. <laughs> <laughs> so he said he realized he's majnun. So he said, let him go. So everyone tried to do something. Even now they try, you know. You can't. That's not the only miracle of the Quran. And there are many others. So they, those things prove that the Prophet was not a liar. He was truly a prophet of Allah, And of course, the ayat, they more than 30 or 40, at least 30 in the Quran that order us to follow and obey the Prophet And obey Allah. Those are connected. And of course, uh, the Prophet he himself said, uh, to follow his sunnah, his way. And he said, I left amongst you two things, as you know, most of you, if not all of you, that if you follow them, you will never be misguided. And that's the book of Allah and my sunnah, my way. And that sunnah and the book was protected by his companions, radiallahu anhum. And also it's important to understand that from loving the Prophet sallam, is to love his sunnah and to love his way. And to hate everything that differs from that. Because that means that is not good. Whatever people try to beautify it. You know, it's like those who commit zina and they say massage. It's a massage parlor. What massage? People go for zina, ayyadun billah. So people, if they change the name, doesn't mean the reality changes. They say, should we legalize prostitution? You have it. Just you call it massage. You can call it bath or something. You can call it anything. The reality doesn't change. So the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it is one. It doesn't change. If someone says, I'm from Ahl Sunnah and he follows against, he goes against the sunnah. Naam? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nur said, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم. That let those who differ from the way of the Prophet Sallam, of the Messenger, or from his way, let them beware that some fitna trial will come their way or painful punishment. And Imam Ahmad Rahimullah used to say the fitna meant in this ayah is kufr. That the person who continuously disagrees with the sunnah that may lead him to leave Islam. That is very dangerous. Or any other fitna in the deen. The worst fitna is in your religion. Billah. If you could do fajr and then suddenly you can't get up. That's fitna. You used to do fajr before imam you come to the masjid. You do adhan even. You open the masjid maybe. But something happened in the heart. Not in your body. In the heart. All of these happen in the heart. Most of them. And you can't get up for fajr. That's a fitna. That means you have to look at yourself and what you think and feel towards others. Towards Allah. Towards the Prophet Or any other fitna. Maybe in your family life. Also hadith. The great hadith. Because we have two more lectures left. And they of course in my view an extension to this one. It's about the the Sahaba and Ahlul Bayt, the relatives of the Prophet ﷺ and his Sahaba, and also about Bid'ah. They related directly to this topic. So I will just point to some things, like Hadith Irbad Nusariya, radiallahu anhu, which we all know, or most of us maybe we know, that the Prophet ﷺ said, they will become, they will, those of you who live long time will see great difference, which we see now. Every village or town has its own Islam. They call each other names. They do takfir of each other. They say they are not Muslims. They are kuffar. They are this. They are that. So the Prophet said, then you have to, when you see that, stick to my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa and bite onto it with your molar teeth. And I warn you against the, the newly in, uh, invented things. 
Also, the Prophet ﷺ said that this nation will divide into 73 sects. This hadith is also mutawatir, the ulama said. Not only is it authentic, it's been narrated by many people through many chains of narration. That this ummah will divide into 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire except one. The fact that the Prophet said this ummah means the Muslims, but that doesn't mean they're kuffar. And some ulama said it means some of them may be kuffar. But what concerns us is not 72. It concerns us is one. That's why Sahaba said, who are those one? They're not worried about 72. They're worried they may not be with that one. And the Prophet said, they're jama'ah. Everyone can say we are the jama'ah. We are the group. We are the unity. But the Prophet said in another narration, what I'm upon today, man alayhi al-yawma wa ashabi. What I'm upon today and my companions. If you're on that, whatever you call yourself, doesn't matter, the name doesn't change anything. The reality is what is important. So if you're upon that, then inshallah you will be from that, from them, from those people who are saved. The ulama said from differing in the dunya, in aqidah especially, in most points of aqidah, we must not differ. There are some minor, you can say, issues of aqidah. Sahaba differed about them. So we can differ on them. But the main issues of aqidah, we can't differ. And they will be saved, the ulama said, from the hellfire in the hereafter. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahu rad, ay mardud. Whoever innovates in this religion of ours or in this affair of ours will have it rejected. If someone says, I didn't innovate, I just do, I, someone innovated. Then we have another version of this hadith that says, Man amila amalan, laysa alayhi amruna fahu rad. Whoever does something which is not in accordance with our religion, with our sunnah, with our deen, then we'll have it rejected. It means not accepted. Now, and we're coming to the end. Just two points left. From the, loving the Prophet ﷺ is to love his companions. Because to hate his companions, as some people do, is to hate the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophet ﷺ said about Ansar, and he said about, before about Abu Bakr and Umar, sign of true Iman is to love Abu Bakr and Umar. And he said sign of a believer is to love the Ansar, the helpers. And sign of Munafiq, hypocrite, or sign of hypocrisy is to hate the Ansar. And of course to love his, his relatives who are Muslims, not non-Muslims. Muslims and helped him and as you know Hamza his uncle died in the battle of Uhud he was killed and he called him Sayyidu Shuhada he is the leader of the Shuhada the true Shuhada not uh, someone died in a demonstration yeah. now we have someone comparing some of those they said like Khalid bin Walid mashallah what are these exaggerations Ikhwan? so those are true Shuhada Shaheed is one who dies fighting for Allah and the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah knows who fights for him. Not everyone, and today I was saying to some brothers, not every fight is jihad. Who are fighting? Oh, jihad. I said, not every, you see someone doing exercise. Oh, he's praying. He's doing exercise, he's not praying. Not every movement is salah, you know. The same way, not every fighting is jihad, ikhwan. Now we have muftis, I call them, of the coffee shop or the street. They drink espresso, mashallah, or mocha or latte. They say, it's jihad. He's kafir. Ikhwan, you must fight. He say, hey, why are you sitting in here then? Why? Go fight, ya khi. Sitting in the coffee shop telling others to die. What is this? Eating cake, mashallah. Wallahi, <laughs> that's how they do. Why are you sitting here telling everyone to die? He says, you are shuhada, mashallah. And you? You are martyrs. Now, so to love the, 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 the Muslims of his household and to love the ulama of the sunnah. 
and to follow them in what they show us from the Sunnah, from the way of the Prophet Because the Prophet said that the ulama are the inheritors of the Prophets So if we don't follow those who inherit the knowledge of the Prophets, then we will follow someone else. Naam. And also Allah said, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى In Surat An-Nisa. Whoever uh, d- uh, detaches himself and opposes the messenger after the, the, the guidance has become clear to him, وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And follows the way other than that of the believers. نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى We will keep him in that way. وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ and we will burn him in Jahannam, in the hellfire, and that is an evil destination. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added to the way of the Prophet sallam, the way of the believers. And the believers means those who believed first, the Sahaba, and those who come after them, following them, as Allah described them in Surah At-Tawbah, those who followed them, correctly now so that is from the Quran and lastly but not least of course I would like to say that from loving the Prophet ﷺ is to love his hadith what he said hadith means speech but in in our literature in Islamic literature we call it the statements of the Prophet ﷺ, or his actions or his description or his acknowledgments Someone did something in front of him and he didn't say anything. That's part of the sunnah. That's part of hadith. And to prefer to follow hadith and not to follow the opinions of people, however great they may be, because the real scholars, they tell us to follow the Prophet ﷺ, and Allah raised them because they respected the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Not like some people say, uh, we're spreading fitna. Which fitna are we spreading? We say follow the sunnah. Is that fitna? Subhanallah. We say worship Allah. Fitna is not to say that. Fitna is not to follow the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ, how did he unite? Because some people say, if you talk about uh, these issues, people, they, they don't like. They, it will divide them. And the Sahaba described the Prophet ﷺ, they said, وَقَدْ فَرَّقَ مُحَمَّدُ الْعَلِيَ سَلَامُ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ The Prophet divided the people. Why? Because some people followed him and some didn't. From one family sometimes. So we want the people to follow the Prophet That is good for us. That is good for our families. That is good for even animals. And for the whole society Wherever you are, Britain, America, whatever, any society, if you follow the Sunnah and you love the Prophet ﷺ correctly and you hate Bid'ah, newly invented and Bid'ah doesn't apply to, linguistically it applies. That's why some ulama said, like Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, that there is Bid'ah wajiba. Bid'ah that is obligatory, not just hasana. But he meant, rahimahullah, and by examples you can see that, that he meant those things not to do with the deen, like improving roads and making things for the government. He said that's an obligation upon the government and upon some people to improve the life of the people. But of course all ulama agree, as far as I know, that to innovate in the deen and to to deliberately differ from the sunnah is haram. And uh, Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he said, it is not permissible for anyone who knows that a hadith is authentic, sahih, authenticated by some ulama, or one of the ulama of the sunnah, to leave it for anyone's opinion. And the ulama said that, ikhwan. That's why I say, those who say we are Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i said it. Those who say we are Hanbali, Imam Ahmad said it. Those who say we are Hanafi, Imam Abu Hanifa said, those who say we are Maliki, the same. All ulama said, you are not a halim until you respect the Prophet You are not a halim. You are not even a good Muslim if you don't respect the sunnah 
of the Prophet And from the respect in the hadith is to respect the books of hadith. To respect the books of hadith, not to put them on the floor, not to put grapes on them, not to put tomatoes with onions on them. I've seen it with my own eyes. That's a disrespect to the books of the sunnah. And to respect the ulama of the sunnah and hadith. And that I mentioned the ulama generally who follow the sunnah, but especially those who deal with hadith. Because they protect the hadith and the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ for us. So may Allah enable all of us and the Muslims to truly respect and love the Prophet ﷺ, uh, and remove the humiliation we are in through that. That is the only way to remove the humiliation. Wa jazakum Allah khair ala sabrikum.